Greetings and hallucinations, ladies and lads. I am Chancellor of the Harmonious Frequencies of the Mighty Empire of Onion, and this is Cyberpunk 2077. What do you want, Regina? Jatera Shobo. Okay. Ring a bell. Okay. Records himself torturing joy toys and sells that to like-minded scumbags. Oh no. Uh, I'm not going to get anything from him though. We only want to buy from Victor. Uh, I guess we could uh, ping off of this thing. See what happens. Breaching. Oh wow. Seems not. Oh yeah. And you. Come around. This is a bit gutsy. There we go. Come with me. If you want to live. Oh. Expanding the brain dance art form. Thoughts and ideas. Like in that film, days of ingredients include one black lamb, two pink porky boys, with an Asian twist, a young hen, and rooster. Flop. Pat pat. Monster hunt. Delicious. What are you even dressed like? Like a monk? With aviator glasses or something? They're not even going to sell me any noodles? Selfish. Selfish. Okay, what's next? Uh, we've got one here. These are new. What is this? Reported crime danger moderate? Danger high we might hold off on. But yeah, there's one right here. So we'll head over and do that one next then. Oh yeah, we got to level up and two perk points available. I think we'll keep going technical ability or intelligence. Increases RAM capacity, uh, quick hack damage, quick hack duration. So really I need my body up if I want to do those fist fights, I think. The, yeah, increasing my armor would be nice though too. So let's, let's try to get technical ability and intelligence up some more. Uh, I would like to work on cool as well, crit damage, resistances, all that, stealth damage and stuff. Uh, perk points. Uh, yeah, and quick hacking, we might as well just drop this, uh, the required RAM for quick hacks. Let's drop this all the way, because we don't have a very good um, deck anyway for now. For now, I plan on getting one, though, uh, as soon as possible. We need to go talk to Victor soon and get that sorted out. See what other goodies that he has for us and pay him back uh, what I owe him already for what he's done. Okay, it is that time. Uh, I mentioned doing an episode pretty much solely on the shards, and here we are. Alright, so we've got the foodie guide to Night City. Uh, the world traveler in Night City is faced with a dilemma. Each enjoy the local cuisine or save their gut the trouble. If you don't own a trauma team policy, you're probably better off sticking to the tried and tested chains and exclusive restaurants. But if you do, Night City is full of risk that packs a lot of reward. Here's our risk-reward breakdown of Night City's good eats. For the cautious consumer, Blue, a gourmet dining experience with some of the highest accolades and richest portfolios in the city. If you're after high-quality, locally-sourced ingredients, Blue is the place for you. Among its marquee dishes are authentic caviar, oysters, and imported Prosecco. The alabaster white interior adorned with minimalist decor is perfect for a relaxing night out following a day of hustle and bustle. Pepper and Spice, a unique locale on the culinary map of Night City. This eatery was founded by renowned travel icon Tony Halik. It stands apart from the competition thanks to its diverse menu of transcontinental fusion dishes most of which are offered at surprisingly reasonable prices. Caribbean, Polish, Kenyan, it's all here, just not in the combination you've ever seen before. The crowd favorite, Halik's own vanilla dumplings. Sounds delicious. For the gutsy gourmand, a buck a slice. According to urban legend, the NCPD has an entire file on the mysterious deaths of homeless people whose last meal was pizza from buck a slice. True or not, bargain seekers living on a euro dollar a lunch budget should still be prepared for gastrointestinal distress. Worth the risk? Only if you want a greasy slice of authentic Night City flavor. Plus, their secret recipe chili spurt, a uh, scoperoni, is unlike anything you've ever tasted, but only available on special request. Rue Lai. 
At Rulai, you'll find all the three Ps, potent, punchy, and pungent. Every visit to this local favorite is like playing a game of Chinese roulette. Regulars at Rulai claim you're just as likely to get bearable egg rolls and halfway decent rangoons as you are tainted tofu or Sichuan salmonella. Sichuan salmonella? You've been warned. Good. Thanks for the warning. Alright, so now articles. We've got the mocks. It's one of those stories that's either very simple or very complicated, depending on who you ask. For Janice, it was a mix of both. The box came to exist because it had to. We didn't have a soul in our corner, no one to make sure street justice was on our side, so we took matters into our own hands. The mox is composed of the people who, if any of them disappeared from the streets tomorrow, you might never even notice. Sex workers, anyless artists, aimless rebels, and restless souls who weren't dealt a fair hand. Today, the Mox is thriving, as demonstrated by the booming biz of Lizzie's Bar. Lizzie's is renowned for being arguably the best brain dance club in Night City. Corporate suits, gangoons, pop stars, and locals alike all gather at Lizzie's to kick back, have a drink, and dip into the most beautifully scrolled and tuned BDs you've ever experienced. Thanks to Judy, I guess. She, uh, she probably edits most of them, right? Most customers, however, are oblivious to the fact that the club is gang-owned and operated, that the mocks are in charge, watching after their own, just like the Lizzie of Legend once did. Know the story? Lizzie used to work here back when it was just a typical dive with a stripper pole, Janice proudly explained. She took care of the girls, made sure eddies were falling into the pockets, and their teeth weren't falling to the curb. Like this one time, this guy, editor's note referring to a Tiger Claws gang member, was having too much quote-unquote fun with one of the girls, and Lizzie just couldn't stomach it anymore. The story is she deprived the worm of his little tiger balls so quick and nasty it took them two days to clean up all the blood and puke splatter. Of course, the claws found out fast, and they flatlined her in a flash. But everyone that she had impacted in some way, they were still around. They came together, fought back, and, well, you already know the rest. That's right. NC Nightlife, Drinks, Dancing, Debauchery. If you're a dance head like us, don't miss out on Lizzie's. You'll find no better brain dance club in the city, no matter how deep you dig. Modern boxes, solid tech, but most important, the catalog chock full of nearly any X XP you can imagine. Experience. Uh, you'll find everything you need to get you off. Fast or slow, nasty or classy, and everything in between. They'll let the girls at the front door scare you off or kill your buzz. They're wary of newcomers, but once you get in, they'll treat you like one of their own. Trust us, give Lizzie's a try and you'll never go anywhere else. Now, the afterlife? That's a different story. Sure, you can cut loose and have a good time here, but the afterlife is a place of business above all else. Want to meet with a fixer about a job that needs doing, discuss important gig details with a client over drinks, or maybe just sit back and people watch to see the comings and goings of the NC's underworld's biggest merc and fixer names. Uh, the afterlife is a great place for all of the above, the only place really. If you're looking for the city's marquee events, you'll find yourself at Riot. Chart-topping playlists, live performances from the biggest stars, both local and from around the world, DJ battles, unique music shows, and media-packed album premieres. Sound like your scene? Don't miss out on Riot. A Family of Empire The legacy of Arasaka needs no introduction. The Arasaka Corporation is one of the most powerful, the world's most powerful, with offices located in every major metropolis across the globe. For years, it has been behind the proverbial wheel of our planet's economic economy and society. The history of Arasaka in Night City is deserving of its own article, but suffice to say, the media industry in our city follows the family behind the megacorp as closely as they do share prices. The story of the Arasaka family is one of empire, a true dynasty under the rule of patriarch Saburo Arasaka. Rumors of the great Saburo's retirement and secession of company control, as well as of its closely guarded secrets to his daughter, Hanako, and son, Yorinobu, have come and passed in recent years, but has a time where such rumors may finally contain a grain of truth. Has a time come, I see. Uh, our sources report that Yorinobu Arasaka is currently in Night City, but not for a social call. And yet, if Yorinobu is strategizing a move for the throne, what if Hanako? Experts who follow the family closely unanimously agree that due to ideological differences between Saburo and Yorinobu, 
Hanako will likely cement herself as the one true heir to the immense fortune and power of the Arasaka family. However, reality is hardly ever so predictable. Familial power dynamics can shift in an instant. For example, what would happen if Hanako fell from favor at a time when Yorinobu had his father's ear? And scenario might and and scenario might cause such a fall? Maybe and what scenario might cause such a fall? No family is without its secrets, and the Arasakas are no exception. After all, what appears first as heaven appears second as hell. Japanese proverb. Wonderful. Safe and sound, Night City Gangs. Hi there. Is your friendly night Hi there. It's your friendly neighborhood canine, Sergeant Dobbs. The useful little guide you're holding contains essential information on the Night City's largest gangs where you'll learn which districts to avoid, how to recognize gang members, how to avoid dangerous situations. Animals. The animals aren't real animals, they're freaks of nature. Pumped to the gills with strength-enhancing hormones, they look more like piles of meat than people. They generally avoid cyberware with the exception of cosmetic modifications that supposedly make them look more like, well, animals. They're extremely aggressive and don't need an excuse to start a brawl, but despite their name, the animals are not a territorial gang. You can find fierce, hostile packs of them throughout the city. Sixth Street Gang. From a distance, they could be easily mistaken for soldiers on leave. Military uniforms, combat boots, buzz cuts, shouting oora every chance they get. But don't let appearances fool you. These are violent, dangerous thugs ready to slit your throat without the slightest hesitation. How's that different from, uh, soldiers on leave? I don't know. You'll want to watch out for them, especially in Vista del Rey. Okay. The Mox. Handsome girls, beautiful guys, but wait, it's a trap. It's a trap. They'll reel you in with their charm, and when you're least expecting it, bam, your eddies are gone. Or worse, the hole in a wall that passes for their headquarters is called Lizzie's Bar, best seen from far away and never entered. After we just read two articles that we're talking about, uh, go there for sure, because it's the best. Maelstrom. If you ever find yourselves in Watson's industrial area, and it's better that you don't, watch out for the sinister faceplates that's Maelstrom. To be a part of the gang, you have to get your eyes and nose cut off and replaced with demonic fiery red optics. Ouch. If they do that to themselves, who knows what they'll do to strangers. Better to leave that mystery unsolved. Tiger Claws. Effervescent neon tattoos with Asian motifs, katanas and shurikens, racing bikes, these are some of the trademarks of the Tiger Claws gang, with a noticeable presence in Japantown. Ignore them and they shouldn't bother you, but do something to provoke them and it's sayonara baby. Ha, huh, hilarious. Valentinos. Golden grills, golden implants, golden crosses, and golden machetes. Say hola to the Valentinos. Uh, despite the Catholic symbolism, they're not exactly love thy neighbor types. Those who get in their way usually end up chopped into pieces and tossed into the Del Coronado. So that must be uh, Padre's gang then, I imagine. Voodoo Boys. These predominantly Haitian gangers are based in Pacifica, but they hunt their victims elsewhere, the net. The Voodoo Boys are the most skilled net runners in the Night City underworld, but beware. That doesn't mean they're not dangerous in real space, too. Be sure to give them a wide berth, or you might just end up like one of their black roosters without a head. Incredible. Left Jab, Boxers Monthly. Kazuo Kano, Ronin from Osaka. Kazuno Kano's name is on the lips of everyone in the boxing world. The up-and-coming light heavyweight remains undefeated after 20 professional fights, 17 of which were won by technical knockout. Some accuse Kano of doping, others say he has connections with the Yakuza. While training in Night City, the light heavyweight was allegedly seen receiving guests from Japan in his gym. Oh no. Afterwards, they were then seen being carried out of the gym unconscious. Wide scars have been visible near Kano's ribs for the past three fights. Local ripper docs say that the scars definitely do not look like an appendix removal procedure. Will Kano become the light heavyweight champion of the world? We'll see after Malone takes his revenge on Hernandez. Amazing. Big Five Employers in Night City, 2077. It's that time of the year again. We present our list of the biggest and best corps to work for in Night City. Who offers paid vacation? Who pays for employees' trauma team insurance policies? Who provides discounts for daycare and child bodyguard services? Have a look at our rankings below. Number one is Arasaka. Coming in again this year in our number one spot, the Japanese Zaibatsu Juggernaut. 
Employees can expect to be fit with the latest in cyberware technology with a loyalty obligation of only 20 years. Good grief. Militech. The American arms giant provides its employees with up to 50% discounts on all Militech weapons. With a deal that good, you'll be able to put a Mark 31 heavy machine gun under the Christmas tree for everyone in the family. Amazing. Uh, three, Biotechnica. Our 2077 bronze medal goes to Biotechnica, who offers up to six, yes six, paid vacation days a year. Four is Kang Tao. China's largest tech and arms manufacturer treats its employees to a gold membership with Trauma Team. Never spend a single minute of your 50-year loyalty pledge worrying about paying for a health coverage. 50 years, good grief. Man, that's like a person's whole life just dedicated to the company. That's crazy to me. And five, Night Corp. While this hometown product can't compete with the biggest international players in terms of budget or ambition, they certainly know how to spoil their staff. Night Corp snuck into our Big Five after a recent announcement to reduce the mandatory work week to just 80 hours. They are a must-apply for all you family-focused folks out there. That's disgusting. Okay, so here are some other shards then. Archive conversation between Jotaro Shobo and Eliezer Flores. Jotaro, come over. I have a few bodies to get rid of. Eliezer, in cold storage. Jotaro, why? Eliezer, okay, I'll come tomorrow. They'll be cremating a few at La, La Katrina, so I'll toss in yours. Jotaro, just come and take them. I don't care about the rest. Eliezer, understood. Brain Dance, available tile, titles. Body Horror 12, the first and last time. Arachnophobia Unleashed, oh no. My big fat chrome body. Welcome to Hack 2, <laughs> Ride It Alive, and Golden Shot 4. Amazing. Birthday present for Shiro. Happy birthday, you crazy guy. Sending you our best wishes and a little present. You've got glitter, don't do it all in one go, and other goodies. Hope your partying slaps. We'll try to drop by, but can't promise anything. They're making us do overtime at the lab to pump out this glitter stuff. Demands off the charts. Try it, and you'll know why. All the best from your chooms on Rovinge Street. Archive Conversation, Tracy Owens and Anna Owens. Tracy. Mom, I need help. I think I've been kidnapped. Mom, please help me. Anna. What? Tracy, sweetheart, where are you? Tracy, I don't know. Anna. Where were you when they took you? Anything will help, Trace. Tell me anything. Tracy. I was at a party at Rachel's. I don't remember after that. I think I'm on a ship. Anna. I called the police, Trace. They're looking for you. I love you. I cannot remember where we found this one or else this would probably make more sense. Another conversation between Jotaro and Peter. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you want to know who's talking, uh, just uh, take a peek at the at the list here. Um, I'm not going to read off their names this time as I go down the, uh, the dialogue. Uh, we're in NC. Finally, sending my people. No worries. Give us a minute getting the merch ready to hand over. What do you need these tired, unwashed masses for anyway? Question mark. I mean, just saying, they've been here a week in these containers, not so fresh. Who asked you for your opinion? Just saying is all. Any more unsolicited advice you want to share? Oh, maybe you know what to do with them better than I do, huh? Sorry, didn't mean to offend you. Oh, you think I'm offended? I'm sorry, really. Whatever for? Look, I don't want any trouble. We're here waiting for your people, okay? Joom, I'm just messing with you. Chill. Sending my Jooms your way. Oh no. Oh no. I think we found that one at the place with the um, the storage container and the people stuck inside. I could be wrong about that. Or maybe that's where we found both of these. That's a possibility. Archive conversation between Kaiko and Jake. Okay, let's try. I'm ready to leave. Really? Mean it? I have nothing to lose. Yeah, you can't live like that way anymore. You can't live that way anymore. When? Today. You get out today. No sense hesitating. Every day we wait is another we risk getting found out. Okay. We'll go to my ripper. Chuma mine. He'll rip that locator out in you, but whatever you do, don't mention Jotaro, or he won't help. I'll say you're my sis. Okay. Then what? We stay at my place for the night, then I help you out of the city. I'm scared, Jake. This is no place for you. Don't be afraid. This is the right thing to do. Archive conversation between Takeshi and Jotaro. Takeshi, boss, we tracked down that ripper. He took out Kaigo's tracker. Uh, said he didn't know she was one of ours. I don't give a flying uh, nonsense. Where is she? We'll find her. 
Ripper says she was here with some Jew. Jake. Not the black guy. Uh, with the mouth grown. That one. Uh, that guy? Yeah. The same. Uh, you have to get them, her and that guy, and do it so everyone sees. So everyone sees what it's like when someone tries to skip out on Jotaro. Uh, what about the Ripper? Teach him a lesson? No. Pay him. Any other uh, person comes to him, tell him to ping us first. Sure, boss. Yep, that's how you do it. Contemporary Netrunner Groups Among all notable Netrunner groups or cells in recent years, Found in Translation has undoubtedly emerged as the most infamous. The four members of the group, known only by their aliases, JD, AP, SK, and BPM, primarily target major Braindance studios and productions. The first reported cyber attacks perpetuated by Found in Translation, FIT, were breaches of studio data fortresses that contained Braindance files slated for release. They made slight adjustments to the recording data in order to replace positive emotions toward corporations with hot-blooded hate and to erase corporate logos that were planted for promotional purposes. In July 2076, after a FIT-altered version of the Braindance Badlands raid hit the market in the Pacific Northwest, many consumers took to the streets of Seattle in a surge of violent anti-corporate riots. Following the incident, studios tightened security measures and law enforcement authorities formally recognized FIT as a terrorist cell that posed a significant risk to public safety and order. In response, FIT adapted its tactics. Rather than solely launching attacks on Braindance producers, they began to infiltrate domestic and commercial Braindance units to corrupt or alter data. Their most recent data manipulation attacks on the Braindance's Wasteland Fury and Slave to the Supervisory Board have cemented their reputation as a formidable netrunner cell that refuses to yield to outside pressure. I feel like this should be in the articles uh, section, right? It felt like a, an article to me. Archive Conversation, Blake Croyle and Tim Autry. And, got the Eddie's man, on our way. Got anything spicy for us to start with. Beat down, curb stop. You're just watching for now. Look tough, guard me. Uh, sounds like a snooze job. Occasionally pop a knee or deal with someone's wife, husband, kid, whatever. Nothing too complicated. Now that's more interesting. Should have started with that. Archive conversation, Ben Azaria and Sasquatch. Sasquatch, wow. Okay, we're at Blake's. And, why, why are you bothering me for? Because here, T? Because here, T. Okay. Uh, spin off. Here, they got an ingredient for juice, uh, lidocaine, lidocaine, you, uh, nonsense person. Might come in handy, then take it. Should we ask Blake first, because it's like his. Uh, ask yourself if you've got, uh, testicles. Okay, perfect. Archive conversation, Michiko Ogata and Kazu Inuka Inukai. Alright, I'm waiting. Crate with the item on its way to you, plus about 50 doses of glitter. Next week, make it 200. I'd take 300 if you can swing it. Of glitter. Two more things, yes? The terms with the badges have been settled, and the samurai wants you to put more kids to work. The children are recruited, already running. Don't worry about the badges, we pay, they keep us hidden. Oh. In storage, current inventory, Roaring Phoenix 827, Max Doc 647, Quartz 876, Aspis 352, Rewrite Back 1372, Black Lace 189, Karanos 674. Marvelous. Archive conversation between Charles and Arif. Charles, uh, you done? All good? Chum, you're messed. Uh, what happened? Wipe Tim and Boris. I told you there was a guard. Yeah, well, he was some six foot borged out solo. Uh, barely brought him down. But you got the stuff, right? I'm a zero, you. Uh, yeah, we got it. You'll see. We'll shift it, and you'll cheer right up. Just lay low somewhere, let the dust settle. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. Assault in progress, underage dealers. Hey, got a job. Spill. Two guys dealing on our turf. Well, mess them up bad enough, the whole district hears about it. The boss wants a lesson learned. Sounds fun, where are they at? B-ball court near med center. Okay, consider it done, buzzing the rest of the crew now. Archive conversation, Kaiji and Isamu. Isamu? How's it going? Deal the whole supply? Yeah, huh? We're so fat on scratch, eddies are starting to clog my arteries. No more scop slop and sleep in stained couches. Uh, the city is ours. And we're gonna 
get with it so hard it can't walk straight. I'll get my hands on more product to move. And you tell your uh, Skez Brain customers to reload their wallets. Let's go. The Undoing, Fall of the First Net. Chapter 1, The Apocalypse. His name was Rach Bartmoss. Everyone, who know, everyone knows who destroyed the first net. The real question is why. Netwatch branded him a criminal and outlaw. The media called him a madman. Is either label correct? You be the judge. Below is a previously unpublished letter which Bart Moss put out just before the release of Rabbids. Why has this document only just now emerged? Well, someone out there did not want you, my dear readers, to ever lay eyes on it. All the more reason to take a deep dive into information available to us, Maria Jimenez. The first net was supposed to save us. It would serve as a platform for those without a voice. It would offer unlimited knowledge to those who hungered for it. It would bring a fractured humanity closer together than ever before in our history. But these hopes were hollow, false. The net spread its tendrils around the globe faster than anyone could have predicted, before anyone could even consider the full range of consequences. This information superhighway turned out to be our path straight to heck. We were robbed of our privacy, deprived of our free will, stripped of our dignity. It was supposed to save us, but now even the net itself cannot be saved. It was molded by the corpse, with sharp edges, spikes, and traps at every corner. Think of the net as a stream of water that flows gently into our minds, before freezing, swelling, and destroying us from the inside out. But remember this about ice. As hard as it may be, it's surprisingly brittle. Once one well-placed strike, and it shatters into a million tiny pieces. Watch out today, and you'll see just what I mean. Wow. Very accurate for, for the real net, to some extent. Archive conversation, Kyle, and more. Got the stuff you ordered. Same prices as usual, no discounts. Come uh, come by at the end of my shift. Wait by the back door. Okay, thanks. This w is the last one. Boss is starting to suspect something. Oh no, what happened? Stuff I swiped was from patients. Swapped out med drips for glucose. And took some unused chrome from coma patients. Like they were using it anyway. Wow. Wow. More started to get worse. Dying. The smell's hard to miss. You get it. Uh, if I don't make the problem disappear, they'll figure it out eventually. Right, right. Well, stuff happens, I guess. Yeah. Scavengers. Archive conversation. More and Quincy. Our man in med center is cracking. Says this is his l the last drop, then he's out. Started feeling some heat. Hmm, not good. I mean, if we turn up the pressure, it could wise up. Now, time to cut ties. Can't trust anyone who uh, messes his shorts that easy. Anyone starts pressing him, he'll break. Grab him and get rid of him. Leave no trace. Nothing links back to the gang. You got it. Archive conversation between Taki Kinmachi and Kinji Sakura. Hey, hey. Opportunity knocks, Chum. Huh? Tony's out of biz. You hear? Mm-hmm. Got thrown off a building. Well, some unpaid debt. Exactly. Didn't pay off his pachinko machines. Now it's our chance. To paint the pavement with our blood? No, no, listen. We can buy those machines at half... At half from Bill the Clown. No way I'd enter biz with him if I were you. And I'd get smart if I were you. Plan to jack yourself to death? A dead end living with your output? At least you won't push me off a roof. Huh. Is he sure? <laughs> Stop, I'm not messing around. Uh, we're taking those pachinko machines and setting them up in the block. Then we earn big the end. There's no way this goes wrong, whatever you say. Oh, it can always go wrong. Clients from group storyteller. Horoscopes, uh, storyteller group. Uh, client number one, 2077, MB Scorpio. You did it again. You rolled up your sleeves and cleaned the Algin, Algin stables? Everyone admires you, but you know that your only reward will be the next task you're given. There are not many like you in Night City, but without you, the city would have long turned into shadows and dust. Avoid flirty AIs that try to impress you with their knowledge of ancient Greek. Your lucky place, the net. Awesome. Client 2, 2077 DK Capricorn. You're a born corpo. You plot, you plan, you calculate, and weave webs so tangled you sometimes lose yourself in them. If only you were the one calling the shots, you would already have the city at your feet. Unfortunately, you're caught up in a maze of responsibilities. Oh, whatever you're plotting, make sure to see it through to the end. Avoid last-minute changes to plans. Your lucky place, Arasaka Tower. Client number three, 2077, DB Gemini. You know the city like the back of your hand. At night, you head out just to listen to the pulse of the streets. 
The juicy chatter, muffled screams, and drunken shouts just to soak up the atmosphere. You've been everywhere, you've tried everything. You're a free spirit, and in Night City that makes you a unicorn. Avoid overworking your lucky place newsroom. Client number 4, 2077, J.S. Taurus. You've done your time waiting in the shadows of others, but your patience finally paid off. The applause and flash photography are all yours. The world of media has opened its doors to you. Television, radio, brain dance, net. And this is just the beginning. Avoid the waves crashing at your feet. Your lucky place, TV studio. Client 5, 2077, MZ Aries. When everyone... When everyone down and out, you came storming back in style. The city loves people like you, it's how legends are born. Your triumph is bittersweet, you've returned, but you've wound up on the street, among the joy toys, con artists, and panhandlers. You know you've got biz here to take care of, but it can get tough when it feels like there's no end to it in sight. Avoid sketchy ripper docks, your lucky place, Jig Jig Street. Hmm. Client number 6, 2077 TM Leo. This city likes to devour players like you, but you know their kind too well to get caught off guard. You're on the ground. You know that in Night City, biz only gets done when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. Not just flimsy dreams. You eat dreamers for breakfast. Avoid genetically modified nuts. Your lucky place, Haywood. Wonderful. Client number 7, 2077, RWO Aries. You've been in demand. You barely finish one task before someone's lined up to give you another. It often seems that you're on your own, but always remember you have a team you can count on. Avoid emotional policemen with difficult pasts. That's very specific. Your lucky place, a bar inspired by Babylonian culture. Okay. Client number 8, 2077, PC Capricorn. Although you've been riding with nomads for years, you're a corpo at heart. You knew that from the moment you stepped into Kenpeki Plaza, you felt at home there. You've had enough of camp life, constantly repairing generators, the sand gritting between your teeth. You'd have given up ages ago if it weren't so if you weren't so good at it. Avoid uh, rap and shiv, your lucky place, Compeki Plaza. Note, highly susceptible to the Barnum effect. What the heck is the Barnum effect? Hmm. Client number nine, twenty seventy seven KK Virgo. You've been in the city for only a short time, but you already know the what and the how. You're, you've already accomplished the toughest part. You have a good team at your back. You've been stand, you've been landing small jobs for now, but you know you're hungry for something bigger. Avoid getting attached to friendly talking machines. <laughs> your lucky place, the music scene. Amazing. The world as will and idea. But besides all this, death is the great opportunity no longer to be I, to him who uses it. During life, the will of man is without freedom. His action takes place with necessity upon the basis of his unalterable character and the chain of motives, but everyone remembers much that he has done, and on account of which he is by no means satisfied with himself. If now, if now he were to go on living, he would go on acting in the same way on account of the unalterable nature of his character. Accordingly, he must cease to be what he is in order to be able to rise, arise out of the germ of his nature as a new and different being. Therefore, death loses these bonds. The will again becomes free, for freedom lies in the es esse, not in the operari, uh, oper operari, I'm not sure, Arthur Schopenhauer. Wow. That was hard to read for some reason. I don't know if it's this, my uh, poor brain or... Um, it, seem, it seems written strangely to me. I don't know why. Okay, so a technology shard. Relive it. Braindance Quarterly. Guest editorial. Braindance editors have long strived to strike a balance between real lived experience and technological. Experiential purity. Uh, the more heavily processed the material, the more abstracted the pathways, the clearer the braindance recording. These fundamental elements of design have guided editors since the first wave of brain-to-brain -brain experience sharing technology took hold. In their pursuit of balance, however, editors have clearly shown a bias for purity over naturalism over the years, even going so far as to so far to use it as a point of pride in the quality of their production. Okay. But in the industry's latest push for greater purity, has the purpose of the technology already been forgotten? Will we not find ourselves processing and filtering a brain dance recording to the point 
that the emotional experience no longer extends beyond what we receive from film, television, and video games. After reliving some of the latest titles on my feeder unit, this once academic question now feels all too inevitable with the industry's current trajectory. For a moment, let's consider why some reports suggest more and more users are searching for unlicensed titles on the black market, so-called black brain dances, extreme brain dances, or XBDs. Are we so sure it's the illicit content they're after, or maybe the real draw is the residual grit we editors try so hard to remove? Distracting thoughts, irrelevant memories, loose associative threads, emotions stretching beyond the desired spectrum. What if this noise is not so superfluous as we believe it to be? What if these peripheral experiences hold the potential to elevate a good brain dance to an exquisite one? We do ourselves a disservice by not exploring these questions before our blind crusade for brain dance purity leads this industry straight into the bin of obsolete fla flash in the pan technology. J.A. Relive it, the quarterly magazine for brain dance editors, amateurs, and enthusiasts, volume 4, 78, December 2076. Amazing. Right, we got literature here. Wonderful. Uh, the Green Death. The weathered man peered into the eyes of the young nomads as if trying to divine his thoughts. Don't misunderstand, he said. I don't mind unexpected guests. But you must recognize when a man lives alone in the middle of the desert, he has a right to ask uncomfortable questions. The boy wouldn't make eye contact, instead glancing nervously through the window as if expecting to spot an armada of battle drones coursing straight for him across the night sky. I, I'm running away, he muttered after a moment of hesitation, from Green Phantom. He's been following me since Yellow Creek. The old man didn't move a muscle, save for a twitch at the corner of his mouth, revealing he knew more than he cared to admit. You have nothing to fear, he said softly. The green phantom only comes for the worst criminals. If you hold regret in your heart, he'll forgive you. He'll offer a second chance. The boy's anxious demeanor suddenly turned to a rebellious grin. I regret nothing. And you, old man, you don't have the faintest clue what you're prattling on about. You're wrong. I've also met the phantom once before. The tenderfoot nomad's eyes widened in surprise for a brief moment. It seemed as if there was a question at the tip of his lips, but he refused to ask it. It's late, the old-timer said. You should sleep. You're exhausted and need to gather your strength before you continue running, if that's what you choose to do. My home is open to you tonight. The boy uttered no thanks. Without a word, he stood and entered the small dark bedroom where his host had prepared a bed. To find his way, he switched on his infrared, then immediately froze in place. There was a body lying on the bed. He edged closer until he could discern its shapes, a pool of cooling blood, withered hands contorted into unnatural angles. The vacant, dead eyes of the old man he had only just been talking to in the other room. Suddenly, the walls began to emanate an otherworldly olive glow. The boy could sense a figure enter the bedroom and stand behind him. If you regret nothing, hissed a cold, emotionless voice, then why do you flee? Then black, the world of the young nomad plunged into darkness. Whoa, creepy. That was pretty cool, though. The Chronicles of Titania, Book 1. You haven't an idea what you're talking about, the green-haired woman snorted and mocked, mockingly smiled. I visited many worlds, each built on a lie. All, although, this might be the first time I've seen its people so stubbornly close their eyes to it. Vision felt a rage rise inside of him. How dare this woman, an outsider to the utopia of Titania, so harshly criticize a system that has guaranteed the happiness of millions, he thought to himself. If anyone is blind here, it's you, Vision finally erupted. Titania knows no inequity, no scarcity. For the first time in human history, everyone belongs to the privileged class. The woman smiled softly with a mischievous twinkle in her amber eyes. Is that so, she asked, and your work at this cannery? Why are you unhappy there? Is it, is it Vizan? Maybe? I thought it was Vision, but I don't think it is. Vizan forced himself to remain calm, and, in truth, he wasn't sure why the stranger's comments had made him so upset. Perhaps it wasn't the foreigner's fault she could not comprehend that humankind had finally achieved the ideal society. Her home, as she described it, resembled a primitive world, one long tainted by the stain of feudalism. In a sense, she was like a child. Intelligent, yes, but ignorant and self-righteous to a fault. There must be a group within society responsible for this type of work, Visan explained. Thankfully, due to the advancement of robotics, the means of production have become fully automized and shifted away from our hands. We now serve only in supervisory roles. 
So to answer your question, no, I'm not unhappy. The robots do my work for me. Wait, you do know what robots are, right? Of course I do. We have something similar, only made from clay and stone. The lime-haired woman replied, still with a smug tone in her voice. Very well, your world has done away with work done by hand. But if that is the case, does that not mean workers such as yourself have lost their former value? Are you suggesting there are none who govern your progress from above your standing who determine your responsibilities? No response. The woman's golden eyes flashed as she laughed at Vizan's confused, flustered silence. My apologies, the stranger's lips curled into an embarrassed smile. Maybe you are an equal member of this corpo corporation, but of what I've seen here, nothing about it matches what you have described. Interesting. Is that a real book? Because I feel like I've heard the story before, or the concept of the story before. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. I think my brother was telling me about it. I could be wrong. Dr. Havoc and Radon. Introduction. The battery sphere is in dire straits. The Ir Iranians have occupied almost half the city. Them and their technocrat Scourge have transformed almost everyone into hordes of mindless zombies. Battery Arena is now the final point of resistance against the invaders from Planet X. It seems the end is, is inevitable. That is, until the legendary mercenary pair arrive just in the nick of time after years of mysterious absence, of course. Admit the cigar amidst the cigar smoke and glint of chrome armor, Dr. Havoc and Radon slaughter scores of enemies without mercy. After all, who could possibly slow the mighty force of a laser-armed mountain of muscle and a spitfire of a sidekick who can transform into a sentient cloud of radioactive gas? I'll tell you, no one so far. Rose Tenorio and Martoni Eleazar take us into the world of computer games first imagined in the bestseller novel Kibble and Scrap by Abe Frost. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a roller coaster ride of comic book violence. If you've ever wondered what the action of the Battery Arena may have looked like, Dr. Havoc and Radon is a must buy. Dive in now. Incredible. Alright, so we have notes now. First aid kit. Hey, make sure we've got everything we need in the first aid kit, okay? Yesterday I had to explain to a client that no really means no, and when I wanted to dress up my hand, it turned out we were out of bandages. So yeah, I'd be super grateful. Mwah. Brain dances, concepts. BD of a woman giving birth. Pro, nobody's done it yet. Con, have to hook up a prenatal wreath, which is more expensive. Uh, BD of the most common dreams, compilation. Pro, it's doable. Con, I'll have to consistently scroll the dreams of a dozen people, couple dozen people, over at least one year to catch the repeating themes. Flying, swimming, falling, going to work, school, naked. Uh, BD scrolled by two actors. Neural track set up so that it looks like one BD. Pro, it'd be Nova. Con, tech for it doesn't exist. I see. Certificate of participation presented to Victor Vector. Second place, heavyweight class. Fourth opening finals, Watson Boxing Grand Prix, Harriet Boner, Harriet Boner, organizer, Ke Keishan Roberts, NCBA president, April 3rd, 2061. Nice. Then we have orders. Code red, target Lieutenant Mower, threat level critical. Who was Lieutenant Mower? I remember that name, but I can't remember who it was. Target presents, oh, the uh, Cyber Psycho. Target presents symptoms of cyberpsychosis, result of telephone consultation with physician negative treatment if possible. Target is located at the attachment attach coordinates and waiting for paramedics to arrive. Surprise attack possible. Warning. Target is armed with military grade combat implants. Highest caution is advised. Upon neutralization of threat, send report via encrypted channels. So they were there to kill her. That's crazy. Yeah, we just knocked her out and uh Sent her on her way. Incredible. Alright, so we're all caught up in charts for now. Um, I may try to read some of these archive conversations in context from here on out, uh, so that they make sense. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. If you want to catch another one, be sure to subscribe. Consider supporting my channel through the Patreon link down in the video description. And feel free to check out any of my other videos or playlists that you might be interested in. I thank you so much for all the time that you spend on my channel. And I hope blessings of wisdom and peace on all of you. Farewell.